think of it, how many nations in the world, if there is one, I don't think there is one, we were talking on the way here, that in their homeland, in the home countries, two flags are being raised every time. The state of whatever country it is, currently we are in the States, and the, sta and the flag of Israel. And two national anthems are being sang. Like the, the current state, or wherever we are, Brazil, other places, and the flag of Israel. So why it is so important for us? Because we are, we are located in a very, very uh, tough neighborhood, I would say. It was tough to begin with. It's still tough. And it's going through major changes. Geopolitical changes, as we all see in the newspaper, beheaded of people, uh, radical Shiite vis-a-vis -vis radical Sunni. And they were fighting it between themselves, but guess what? When they'll finish with that, who is next in line from their perspective? Uh, threatened borders, um, unstable regimes around us, unstable countries. Uh, so I think that in terms of security-wise and geopolitical-wise, we are facing very, very challenging times. Another transformation that we have seen is the practice of security issues. Uh, from just regular war, tough but fairly simple, to a very complex situations of terrorism, stand of affairs, trajectories, cyberspace, undersurface. Um, imagine all of them. Very exposed to the media very complicated in terms of international affairs. And I spoke today in another place and I said that we need to gain support. We expect in Israel no one to fight for us, but we expect people to support us. Because though we are the strongest nation in their area, and we must keep it this way, uh, we are also right. And the fact that we are not the weakest one only means that we survive, and we will survive, but it doesn't mean that we won't have to fight once in a while. And the biggest problem we have is the fact that civilians are being the targets of the war. Terrorist organizations, enemies, are trying to bypass the IDF capabilities and straight forward to our civilians and unfortunately, they are using their own civilians as human shield at the same time. So we have this very complex situation in which we need to fight. Uh, we have a great moral dilemma of how, how to fight. How can you minimize the civilian casualties on the other side and differ between military targets, operational targets, and regular civilian targets as much as you can? But at the same time, how can you bound to yourself and, and make sure that you defend your own country? And, you know, it's like, it's like a moral pretzel. pretzel. It always goes around and it keeps back coming to the same point and the dilemma comes over and over again. And it stands for me as the chief of staff. It also stands for the soldier on the field and needs to fulfill its mission. Um, we have lots of opportunities in Israel. I think we do have shared interest with so many countries. Egypt, Saudi, Jordan, even official Lebanon, uh, Gulf country states, Morocco. But the other places are less stable. I hope we can strive for peace. We should strive for peace together with the Palestinians and others. And by doing so, we'll be able to achieve two things. A, hopefully peace. And if we fail to get it, at least we know that we tried and we will regain internal and external legitimacy for our operation. So I think it's very important for us as well. We have young and great, great and young generation, some of whom are here and those who are in Israel. Anything they do, they do better than we did. 
and I don't consider to be myself to be an old, but I've seen things before. They are doing great stuff. We have a fairly strong economy. And the last and not least, we have uh, no alternative, and we are right. So if you are right, and you have no alternative, you'll eventually overcome any obstacle or any problem you face in which we, the paratroopers, like to call challenge instead of a problem. But we do need the support of the international community. And this is what the Jewish diaspora has a major role at the States of Israel's future. It's partnership. We are the state of our citizens. But we are also the nation state of all the Jewish people. And when I see here a living memorial to the Holocaust, it brings me my mother, so Weidberg and Belzen, and brings me so many of our parents that went through different things. And Israel is a living memorial for whatever happened in previous generations. But Israel is also our national insurance for future times. I'm sorry that interfer interfering with insurance here, I don't really understand about it. But, uh, but basically, this is what we are. In Israel, you call 911, IDF shows up. Uh, if the Jewish people anywhere calls 911, the state of Israel is there. We were there for the Ethiopian Jews as we brought them from Ethiopia. We were there for the French as they currently came. The Argentinians did so some 15 years back. Unfortunately, we were not there during Second World War, being able to really operate about it to a degree. Uh, so I think we are privileged of taking this responsibility. Uh, we are privileged to secure not only current times in Israel, but really to ensure it for generations to come. This is not, um, it's not a project that has a beginning and an end. It's a, an endeavor that will never end. Uh, and we better off do it together. So the Maccabiah games, for me, are more than just a sport event. Uh, it is a national strength for the state of Israel, a national strength for the Jewish people as a whole, and a very enjoyable, obviously, event sport-wise speaking, culturalized, uh, culturalized speaking, people are getting to get to know each other from different places. Yes, ma'am. Look, I believe in Israel we need to find ways to unite ourselves even though we won't be unified. Uh, we have so many different colors, so many different genders, so many different, you know, religion, Druze, Muslims, Israelis. Within the Judaism, we have Orthodox, ultra-Orthodox, you know, it's so colorful, it's so many of them. So, I think we should, in order to do so, uh, we need to try and have, I think, two things. Uh, first, the framework which allows the country to be one, united. Uh, and the second one is as much, as, as, as much ties that we can produce, whether it's sports, as you are suggesting, uh, music, even just getting to know each other, you know, just visiting each other, being together, realize that we are simply human beings who need to live together in the same place. So sport definitely plays a role in this. Yeah, it, it takes some patience, it, it will take time, but if people will be eventually believe in good cause and future hopes, I think that maybe we can move forward. So definitely, thank you for that. Israel currently has, uh, I would say, we lead in best practice as far as air defense for all type. Uh, we develop, uh, I would say, Two, la two layers of air defense. The upper layer, which stands for missiles that goes out of the atmosphere and comes back, such as missiles that comes from Iran. Over there, you might see the arrow and that type of stuff. We have a lower tier, 
which is well known by the Iron Dome that has been demonstrated very successful in the last uh, two or three events that we had in uh, Gaza. And the David Sling is actually practicing on both upper tier and lower tier as well. I think it gives a very good and very reliable uh, answer to Iranian future challenge if they come, just as the David, the, the, the Iron Dome does for rockets. So I think we should continue and promote defensive measures such, such as those, but at the same time, we must continue to develop our offensive capabilities because you don't end up winning wars just by defensive, but it needs to be well balanced with offensive forces as well. So to your questions, yes, the David Sling is a very important system, but it's part of a bigger system. It's not this system itself. Yes, ma'am. It started, it started really like, like anyone else in Israel. I was part of this education, and we all understood that when our parents uh, put us to sleep and say, we hope that when you grow up, you won't be a soldier. It was merely a dream of parents, but not really a reality. I was raised in a small village. My father and I went out to the field. We sit on the grass and he said, son, if we are not going to the security service, who will? So I couldn't afford to come home before I become, let's say, an officer or, or do a serious uh, service. All the rest was a mistake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just, you know, honestly speaking, you, you, know, you, you, you chose to go there and then you stay. You always tell yourself, okay, I do another assignment. It's, it's challenging enough. It's always important, you know. Even when I spoke with young officers to stay in the army, I would quite rapidly put the ideology piece aside, because if, it's, if it is important and that's it, there's nothing else to it, then there's no argument. You just stuck there and that's it, you do it because this is your duty, period. But there is more to it. And there is the challenge, and there's always the next job that you tell yourself, I can do it and then retire, and I'll feel uh, fulfilled with joy and contribution to whatever I did and, and well challenged. And by the time I became a general, so I stayed. But till general, it was really step by step and not really a career decision that I took upon myself. Thank you. Yeah. I think the balance, the deterrence balance between us and the Iranians is, is fairly strong. But we must remember that currently what plays the role there, it's not just them and us. It's us and the, I would say, proxies whether it's Hezbollah or it's uh, Jihad Islamic Palestinian groups and others, but they are also deterred pretty much, even though that it's so sensitive that sometimes tactical events can start a whole campaign that no one really wanted to begin with. And it's not me who's saying it, it's Nasrallah who said it. If we to consider it for 1% that that's going to be Israel retaliation in 2006, he would never ignite this uh, abduction thing that he did. And I think same stands for Hamas right now, same stands for Hamas before. It's just a, a wrong strategic calculus that people are doing sometimes. This is how you find yourself in campaigns that you didn't, no one really wanted to get into. Um, as far as the Palestinians, but as, and as far as Iran, I, I think they are deterred. Uh, and uh, I, you know, at the end of the day, you know, things can happen. I'm not saying that there's 100% that nothing will happen, then let's take all our investments and move them to other issues that the society is so much in need. Uh, you know, we need to invest in so many different things in Israel. I can come up with a different, totally different priorities what you expect me to say. Uh, and nevertheless, I do believe that in security, in other issues, you need to invest as much as you can, but in security matters, you need to invest as, how much, as much as you need, and there's a difference there. As far as the Palestinians, I think we are not going anywhere. I think they are not going anywhere. I think that both sides eventually will realize it, and I think that it can be promoted without, uh, without um, compromising our security considerations. Uh, 
and definitely we need to try. And as I said before, uh, either we'll succeed, when, which is a great result, and if we we'll fail to succeed because we cannot compromise, I'm not getting into the political issues. Some can say unacceptable politically and we are not doing it. Okay, that's his view I'm not gonna argue with. But assuming that uh, we can reach it somehow on the political aspect, the security consideration will be there. And if we fail to do so, so it's crucial for us. Look, I visited 67 families after the last war in Gaza. Went from one family to another, no press, nothing was there, it's just them and me, and me and them. Very painful. Sometimes they were very angry at me. But nevertheless, they have never argued the cause. They never argued the fact that they knew that we did it only when we had to do it. And once we try to achieve peace, I think the strength of Israel will be so much stronger than it is right now. Can we get there? We must try. It's going to be hard. I'm not sure we can succeed. But I know we cannot afford not to try. I can take one more. Please, sir. Uh, every time that we wait with the peace, we lose something. Uh, but let us not free the Palestinians from their responsibility. I think that the fact that they have sent those elements to the ICC, to the international community, they don't, they don't, they don't take responsibility. So let us, let us encourage ourselves to try and, and strive for peace, but let's not discharge the others from being there as well. I think that Abu Mazen is not willing to sign an agreement with us yet. So he is doing so many different filibusters processes to help him avoiding these historical events that he needs to take. But I represent myself, I don't represent him. And by the way, I want this peace not for him, I want the peace for us. Uh, so this is why I think it is so important, but at the end of the day, if they will not settle for security considerations aside along, as, along with the political things that I'm not dealing with, then uh, it's a problem. But we should try and it's always getting worse and worse and people also get kind of less belief in the, in the possibility of achieving peace, you know, it's, uh, and I understand why. I was the last Israel soldier to leave Lebanon in May, in May 2000, literally speaking. What did we get after we leave? A strong, large Hezbollah. And people are saying, okay, what are we gaining? We saw what happened in Gaza. We saw what happened in other places. So I understand the fear and the inconfidence that people have. And I'm not saying to compromise our security. This is something that you will not hear from me. I never advocate for this. Uh, this is the only country we have, and we have no alternative of losing it. Uh, but <coughs> for the same reason, I think we should promote. Uh, it's late at night, uh, thank you very much for listening, and I want to once again tell you uh, how much it's important, this, those Maccabiah games, uh, from the national strength, I would say, not just from the sportive piece of it, which is as important. And I wish, and I want to see a successful Maccabean future time. So thank you very much, and Hial, please. You are my man. Thank you, Benny. Few, so we'll return to the Maccabea for a few minutes. And uh, before I end my uh, short uh, speech, if anyone has any questions regarding the Maccabea, regarding the athletes, regarding the project, also, I want to mention Garrett Weber. Garrett, please stand up. Come and join me. Garrett, you know, we are not that good in, uh, in, in sport. We are very well known as businessmen, genius, Nobel Prizes, and others. And in sports, you know, always complain that maybe in chess or some other sports, but we have really brilliant athletes, Jewish athletes uh, amongst us. And Garrett is one of the leading one. Garrett uh, was um, Olympian gold medalist in Beijing in 2008. And uh, he uh, participated in the well-known uh, relay race with Michael Phelps and they, they and another two won the gold medal at that, at that Olympic. And we salute you all. 
Garrett, for that. But from my point of view, you know, the gold medal that we awarded for him, because in 2009, he decided to come and participate in the Maccabiya rather than going to the World Swimming Championship. 2013, I'm sorry. And um, this was very impressive, very touchy. He came over, he gave up uh, and not going to the, to the World Championship and did a great job for the State of Israel in Maccabiya. Please share with us your experience. Yeah, thank you first of all for having me here. Uh, I don't have any... I don't have any formal um, ties to the Maccabiya other than the fact that I competed there in 2013. Um, I have a deep love for Israel and a compassion for the, the people who are involved in the Maccabiya. I grew up in Milwaukee having a dream to compete in the U.S. Um, or for the U.S. at the Olympics. Um, I'd seen many Olympians do that, wanted to represent our country, and was able to achieve that dream in 2008. In 2001, I saw Lenny Kraselberg, maybe some of you know him, great Olympic swimmer for the U.S. He competed at the Maccabee Games, and I saw a poster of him at my JCC in Milwaukee and thought, well, that sounds like a really cool event to compete in as well. Maybe I'll do that someday. So I competed at the Olympics in 2008. Um, Jason Lezak, you may know, he was also on the relay in 2008 with me. He competed at the uh, Maccabee Games in 2009. And before I went to compete at the, Olympic, or the Maccabee Games in 2013, people, they asked me, are you excited? What do you think about the Maccabee Games? I told them I really don't know. Um, people said it's the, the Jewish Olympics. It's going to be wonderful to be in Israel. I had a good friend of mine who was my camp counselor growing up at Jewish summer camp in, in Wisconsin and said, when you go to Israel, you're going to feel something in Israel that you've never felt anywhere in your life. And I said, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be great, beautiful place. I feel like I'd been to a lot of places before. But he really was right. When I went to the Maccabee Games in 2013, I experienced something unlike anything I had experienced in any competition or in any country that I'd previously been to. At the Olympics, you go there to prove that you're the greatest athlete, that you're the strongest, the fat fastest, the most mentally fit, we were proud to represent our country, but actually the Maccabee Games is nothing like the Olympics because the Olympics doesn't have any culture. The Olympics is a bunch of people from around the world who don't really have any ties, not even the Olympians from the US or their own country. They have different religions, different upbringings, different training facilities, um, certainly different religions, most of which are not Jewish. And at the Maccabee Games, Everyone is tied for one specific purpose in being there and representing our people in proving that we or proving that we have a strong community, that we are great athletes, and first and foremost, that we're proud to be Jews and proud to be competing in Israel. So it was an incredible experience for me, my family, my wife. Um, we're going back to help the Maccabiah um, in a couple weeks at a conference. I'm happy to be here with you guys and uh, have committed myself to helping these uh, folks promote the Maccabee in any way that I can. So thank you so much for your support. I, I, I hope that you guys get involved, whether it's with time, effort, uh, money, however you can, because it really does change people's lives and it certainly changed mine. Thank you so much. Guys, I want to thank you all for uh, in joining us for a great evening. Uh, we will be in touch with you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in Israel in 26 months. Thank you and good night. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double chai, or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. 
Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to Jem. To Jem. Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.